thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as best I could, but when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. Now, you who so well know the nature of my soul will not suppose, however, that I gave utterance to a threat. <laughs> At length, I would be avenged. I would not only punish, but punish with impunity. It must be understood that neither by word nor deed had I given Fortunato cause to doubt my good will. I continued to smile in his face, but he did not perceive that my smile now was at the thought of his immolation. <laughs> he had a weak point, this Fortunato, although in other regards he was a man to be respected and even feared. He prided himself in his connoisseurship of wine. I was skillful in the Italian vintages myself and bought largely whenever I could. It was about dusk, one evening during the supreme madness of the carnival season, that I encountered my friend. He accosted me with excessive warmth, for he had been drinking much. The man wore the costume of a jester. He had on tights, and his head was surmounted by the conical cap and bells. I was so pleased to see him that I thought I should never have done with wringing his hand. I said to him, my dear Fortunato, you are luckily met. How remarkably well you are looking today. Oh, I have received a keg of what passes for Amontillado, and I have my doubts. How, said he, Amontillado, a cask? Impossible. And in the middle of the carnival? Well, I have my doubts. And I was silly enough to pay the full Amontillado price without consulting you in the matter. You were not to be found, and I was fearful of losing a bargain. Amontillado! Amontillado! Yes, as you are engaged, I am on my way to meet Lucchese. If anyone has a critical turn, it is he. He will tell me. Lucchese cannot tell Amontillado from Sherry. And yet some fools will have it that his taste is a match for your own. <laughs> Come, let us go to your vaults. Oh, my friend, no, I will not impose upon your good nature. I perceive you have an engagement, Lucchese. I have no engagement. Come. My friend, no, it is not the engagement, but the severe cold with which I perceive you are afflicted. The vaults are insufferably damp. They are encrusted with mold. Let us go, nevertheless. The cold is merely nothing. Huh? Amontillado, you have been imposed upon. As for Lucchese, he cannot distinguish Sherry from Amontillado. Thus speaking, Fortunato possessed himself of my arm. I putting on a, a mask of black silk and drawing a cape closely about my person, suffered him to hurry me to my palazzo. Oh, there were no attendants at home. They had absconded to make merry in honor of the time. I took from their sconces two torches, and giving one to Fortunato, bowed him through several suites of rooms to the archways that led into the vault. I passed down a long and winding staircase, requesting him to be cautious as he followed. We came at length to the foot of the descent and stood together on the damp ground of the catacombs of the Montresors, my family. The gait of my friend was unsteady, and the bells on his jester's cap jingled as he strode. Where is the cask? It is farther on, but observe the white web work which gleams from these cavern walls. Mold? <coughs> Mold, mold, yes. How long have you had that cough? <coughs> My poor friend found it impossible to reply for many minutes. <coughs> it is nothing, nothing. Come, we will go back. Your health is precious. You are rich, respected, admired, beloved. You are a man to be missed. For me, it is no matter. We will go back. You will be ill, and I cannot be responsible. Besides, there is no chasing. Enough, enough. The cough is a mere nothing. It will not kill me. I shall not die of a cough. <laughs> true, true. And indeed, I had no intention of alarming you unnecessarily. But you should use all proper caution. A draught of this Madoc will defend us against the death. 
Here I knocked off the neck of a bottle which I drew from a long row of its fellows that lay upon the mold. Drink, I said, presenting him the wine. He raised it to his lips with a sneer. He paused and nodded to me familiarly while his bells jingled. I drank to the berries that repose around us. And I to your long life. He again took my arm, and we proceeded. The wine sparkled in his eyes, and the bells jingled. My own fancy grew warm with the maid up. We had passed through walls of piled bones with casts and puncheons intermingling into the inmost recesses of the catacombs. I paused again, and this time made bold to seize Fortunato by an arm. The mold, you see, it increases, it hangs like moss upon the vaults. We are below the river's bed. The drops of moisture trickle among the bones. Come, we will go back ere it is too late. Your cough, it is nothing. Let us go on. Let us proceed to the Amontillado. <laughs> be it so. He leaned heavily upon my arm. We continued our route in search of the Amontillado. We passed through a range of low arches, descended, passed on, and descending again, arrived at a deep crypt in which the foulness of the air caused our torches to glow rather than flame. At the most remote end of the crypt, there appeared another room, less spacious. Its walls had been lined with human remains, piled to the vault overhead in the fashion of the great catacombs of Paris. Three sides of this interior crypt were still ornamented in this manner. From the fourth, the bones had been thrown down and lay in a mound upon the earth. Within the wall, thus exposed by the displacing of the bones, we perceived a still interior recess in depth about four feet in width three and height six or seven, cut into the solid granite. Proceed. Herein is the Amontillado. As for Lucchesi, he is an ignoramus. <laughs> he stepped unsteadily forward while I followed immediately at his heels. In an instant, he had reached the extremity of the niche, and finding his progress arrested by the rock, stood stupidly bewildered. <laughs> Uh, in the surface of the granite, there happened to be two iron staples. From one depended a short chain, from the other a padlock. It was but the work of a few seconds to throw the links about his waist and secure him. He was too much astounded to resist. <laughs> Withdrawing the key, I stepped back from the reef. Pass your hand over the wall, Fortunato. You cannot help but feel the mold. Indeed, it is very damp. Once more, let me implore you to return. Hmm? No? <laughs> then I must positively leave you. <laughs> but I must first render you all the little attentions in my power. The Amontillado. True, the Amontillado. As I said these words, I busied myself among the pile of bones of which I have spoken. Throwing them aside, I soon uncovered a quantity of building stone and mortar. With these materials and with the aid of a trowel, I began vigorously to wall up the entrance of the niche. 